All right, guys, quick disclaimer. Uh, I uploaded this video yesterday and it was immediately taken down and I even got a copyright strike, so that's fun. Uh, so I did some pretty wonky stuff to the footage. Don't mind that. Uh, enjoy the video. Tonight's the night and it's gonna happen again and again has to happen. There he is. Darth Plagueis. He's the one. So in case you guys didn't know, I'm a pretty huge fan of Dexter. Haven't really ever talked about it on this channel before, but then again, why would I? The show ended years ago, had a pretty unsatisfactory ending, and there was hardly ever really any point. But Dexter recently got its very own revival show that just went off, and I went ahead and watched it. And I gotta say, it was pretty good. No complaints, would recommend. In fact, well, that's, that's why I asked you here, Pete. I want to tell you all why Dexter New Blood is a great show and why you should all go watch it. Now, I understand that if you're someone who hasn't seen the original show, then this show probably won't do anything for you. The original show has like eight seasons, so I would never ask you guys to watch that just to understand this one. The fact of the matter is that New Blood only really exists to kind of fix the piss-poor series finale we originally got, and if you never watched that show, you were never disappointed by it like I was, and you don't need this show to fix it for you. However, I will say that despite the pretty lackluster final couple of seasons, the rest of the show is honestly really good. I went ahead and rewatched the entire thing as new episodes of New Blood were spilling out, and not only is it as good as I remember it being, it's actually better. I originally remember thinking that only the first four seasons were good, meaning that an entire half of the show was crap, but actually upon rewatch, seasons five and six are pretty decent. Not as good as the first four, but not insultingly bad like season seven and eight. So this is my official recommendation. You should go watch that show. If you're looking for something to binge and you like shows about serial killers and true crime, then this is the show for you. Dexter is basically just the original you, so if you like that show, you're probably gonna like this one too. And you can watch the whole series with a free account on Amazon Prime. But if you don't plan on doing that, but you're still curious enough to give New Blood a chance, then here's pretty much everything you need to know about Dexter. And Spoilers, obviously, for the original show. Dexter Morgan, born Dexter Moser, was adopted by a cop named Harry when he was three, after having watched his mother be brutally murdered in a storage container right in front of him. Though he wouldn't retain any memory of this until adulthood, it would psychologically damage him for the rest of his life. As a kid, he started showing psychotic tendencies, which Harry quickly took note of. But instead of giving him special help like a normal father would, he decided that there was no way to prevent Dexter from growing up to become a killer, so he taught him a code to channel his urges. Dexter only kills people who meet his code, which would be other murderers who escape the justice system. This is how he justifies his murders throughout the show. They were guilty, they escaped the law, so they got the table. In season one, he finds out that he actually had a brother named Brian who also witnessed their mother's death, but Brian was older than Dexter, so Harry just decided he was a lost cause and left him to the system. Because He's father of the year over here. Anyway, Brian went on to be a serial killer as well, and he wanted Dexter to break away from Harry's code and just live freely, but when it came down to choosing between Brian and his adopted sister, Deb, he ultimately chose Deb. Dexter also has a wife named Rita, who was eventually killed by another serial killer Dexter was vetting, and Dexter came home to find her dead in the bathtub with their infant son, Harrison, sitting in a pool of her blood, mirroring Dexter's own origins. This is a pretty hardcore origin story. Also in season two, a lot of his victims that he had done in the ocean were found by deep sea divers, so the police ended up opening an investigation on him, naming him the Bay Harbor Butcher. But they ended up tracing the evidence to a cop named Dokes, who never liked Dexter and always suspected something was off about him. Surprise, motherfucker! The case ended when Dokes died in an explosion caused by a woman who was obsessed with Dexter, who Dexter would then later kill because she now fit his code. It's all very convenient. Later on in season seven, Captain Maria LaGuerta of Miami Metro began to suspect that Dexter had framed Dokes, but investigating him cost her her life when a decision had to be made by Deb to either save her or save Dexter. She chose Dexter. Then at the end of the show, Dexter was gonna go run off with his new murderer girl boss girlfriend Hannah and his son, but then Deb got shot, so he went to go avenge her death, telling Hannah to take Harrison to Argentina and he would meet her there. But after mercy killing a comatose Deb, he took her out on his boat, dumped her body into the ocean, and drove straight into a hurricane, intending to die. He didn't die, but the show ends with him in Oregon, having decided to become a lumberjack, uh, for 
some reason. And that's the extremely abridged version of what all you need to know for this show to make sense. I hope you can see why this ending to the series was not one that left a lot of fans happy. Basically, we all knew from the beginning that there were only three ways a series about Dexter could end. Ending number one. Dexter just never gets caught and continues to live his life as normal. This would have been the most boring and predictable ending, but it's apparently what a lot of fans wanted because it was the safest option, and I don't really believe in that sort of thing. Ending number two. Dexter dies or goes to prison, which going to prison in Florida where the death penalty is legal pretty much implies that this outcome results in Dexter's death no matter what. Although if he died in some other way, it could have been interesting just given the context. Clyde Phillips actually once said in an interview that the way he was always planning to end the series was with Dexter getting the chair, and as he's dying he would start hallucinating and seeing all the people he killed over the years. I just think that would have been really cool. That's the ending I would have preferred. And ending number three, Dexter gets away with everything, skips town, and changes his name. This is how the show actually ended, and if I'm being honest, while this isn't the ending I was hoping for, it could have been great if it had made any sense. He was already planning on ditching town and never coming back, and he could have spent the rest of his life with Hannah and his son in Argentina, where the cops would never have found him. But instead, he drove into a hurricane and then became a lumberjack. Dexter New Blood actually does a pretty good job explaining why he did this in a way that I can get behind, if only it had been conveyed more clearly from the beginning. It's explained that he figured Harrison was better off without him and so he decided to leave him in Hannah's care. He was protecting the one thing in his life that was good. Which brings us to the new show, where Harrison is back in Dexter's life after what's supposedly been 10 years. Yeah, the timeline doesn't really add up. It's said that it takes place 10 years after the season 8 finale, which should put it in 2023, but that would make Harrison Harrison, like, 14, yet he's at least old enough to drive and get a job, so... Also, this calendar here says 2021, so, yeah, I... I don't know, I guess Harrison is 12. But anyway, he's back, right on time for Dexter's first murder in just shy of a decade, kicking off the entire series. I'll reserve my spoilers for later on in the video because there are some things that I want to talk about that I just can't really avoid spoilers, but I do seriously want you guys to watch this show, so I'm going to try to explain why Dexter New Blood is a damn near perfect final installment to the series. This show is basically Dexter Season 9. It is pretty much the same premise as the original show, with an ongoing mystery throughout the season involving Involving another serial killer who just coincidentally also lives in this small town. In classic Dexter style, he's also mixed in with the local law enforcement in that he's dating the chief of police because he just can't seem to leave well enough alone. All the while, he begins seeing violent tendencies in his now teenage son, and as the relationship continues to strain, Harrison begins to gravitate toward the one person who poses a real threat to Dexter in his perfect little life. The show does such a good job drawing on the parallel between Dexter and Harrison, and for the first time in years, Dexter believes that he might finally have someone who understands him completely who won't judge him for who he is. I mean, throughout the original show, he has plenty of other people come into his life who fit that same exact premise, but those relationships always seem to fall apart for one reason or another. The only other person would have been Hannah, but she apparently died between series, presumably because the actress who played her didn't want to come back. But that leaves Harrison as the only one left standing. So, will this work out between them? Has Dexter finally found the perfect partner in crime in his son? Well, to get into that, I pretty much have to go into spoilers. There isn't really much I can actually say about this show without giving the entire thing away, but if I've intrigued you enough to give this show a chance, then I'll have done my job. If not, that sucks, but now I can talk about why I think the end of this show was done perfectly, and this is your official spoiler warning. Skip to this time frame for my closing thoughts. Now, I've seen a lot of mixed feelings about the end of this show, and a lot of people hate it because Dexter dies, but then a lot of them are only upset about Dexter's death because it was the death of a character they like, and that's not really something I can get behind. If you don't think this was a narratively satisfying end to a character you followed for 15 years of your life, then that's fine. But if you're mad about Dexter's death because you just like him and wanted him to get away with everything, then I'm sorry, that's dumb. For one thing, like I said earlier, this show exists entirely to rectify the ending of the last show because it was terrible. Remember what happened at the end of that show? Dexter ran away and changed his identity and ended the series completely alone. So what were you hoping to happen here? Dexter escapes prison, skips town, changes his identity, and ends up completely alone. You see the issue here, right? Unless you were hoping that Dexter and Harrison would skip town together and continue their murder spree, but if that's what you were expecting, then I'm sorry to say it, you missed the entire point of, well, 
Dexter. See, I think a lot of people like to romanticize the premise of the show in a way that they were never really meant to do. And of course, it's been said multiple times on both shows that Dexter is a vigilante. A hero, even, because he saves a lot of lives. And one of the main moral questions that the original show liked to pose was whether or not Dexter was a good person. Is it right what he's doing? Does anyone ever deserve to die? And even if so, who made him judge, jury, and executioner? And when Harrison finds out what his dad does, of course he's initially enthralled by the idea, because in his naive way, he sees Dexter as just that, a hero. So you're, you're kind of like Batman or something. <laughs> so of course when he finds out Dexter killed an innocent man to save his own skin, he's going to be a little upset. To him, that only proves that everything his dad ever told him was a lie, because it was. And people like to say that Dexter killing Logan was out of character, but I just don't understand how you could think that's true. He was perfectly willing to kill LaGuerta when she was closing in on him, despite the fact that she doesn't fit the code at all. Because the thing about Dexter is that he's not the hero of the story, and he never was. He doesn't kill out of any sense of justice, he kills for one very simple reason because he likes it. This exact moral dilemma has been the focal point of several plot lines throughout the first show. So yeah, I can completely buy that when push comes to shove, he would kill an honest, good person to save himself. And again, Harrison doesn't like that, which leads to a climactic final confrontation that is just perfect. Like I said earlier, of the three ways that Dexter's story could end, his death is probably the one that I preferred the most, but again, only if it was done in an interesting way. And if he had been killed by anyone other than Harrison, I don't think I would have bought it. There just wasn't enough connective tissue between Dexter and the rest of the characters introduced in this series to justify any one of them ending the long-standing reign of Dexter Morgan. I don't think I would have even accepted it if he was killed by Batista. I know the going theory for many years was always that Deb would be the one to kill Dexter, and back then she she was pretty much the only one who could have done it for me, but obviously she's dead so that can't happen, which leaves Harrison as the last one standing. And considering the journey he and Dexter both go on in this series, this was a perfect resolution to both of their stories. Because again, people love to romanticize Dexter's vigilanteism, but if Harrison really had carried on his legacy, then that would have been a complete betrayal of his character. Him killing Dexter signified that the horrible cycle was finally ending. What started as one father's dream for his own son was to be carried on from that son to the next, but Harrison Harrison finally put a stop to all of it. And like the show has told us multiple times, Harry teaching Dexter the code was the wrong thing to do. He taught his son to be a serial killer instead of providing him with psychiatric help at a young age, and this is not something we're supposed to see as good. So for Dexter to have tried to do the same thing for his own son was exactly the opposite of what he should have done. By introducing Harrison to that side of him and by telling him it's okay to kill people, he was giving in to his own selfish desires. So yeah, I think this was the perfect ending to the story, and I'm glad we got it. Fans can whine all they want, but I'm satisfied. The only thing I will say is that the ending was a little rushed. They could have easily had Dexter on the run or stand trial and spend an episode or two on that. I like that Harrison killed him, but I would have been just as satisfied as if he'd just like nicked him in the leg or something and turned him over to the police. Narratively, the sins of the father are atoned by the son, so it still works. While I'm complaining, I'll also say that they kind of set this guy up to be an antagonist of some kind, but then after like a couple episodes, he was just never seen again, which was pretty weird. I guess he was supposed to be like a red herring so that we would suspect he was the killer and not Kurt. I don't know. I found his character intriguing, but ultimately he was wasted, so. Otherwise, great show. If you're someone who's never seen any of Dexter, then I implore you to watch it. And if you're someone who watched the original show and were dissatisfied with how it ended, so you decided to just skip this one, then I completely understand. I almost did the exact same thing, but I'm glad I didn't, and I think you will be too. With that, I'll give Dexter new blood. an 8 out of 10.